I've been putting off a really important step for my rain barrel project since I knew I would be present for the most part whenever I was using it. But in the case that I want to run it automatically, for example, using the remote app I created in the last video, I needed to figure out a way to protect the water transfer pump from running and potentially burning up if there was no rainwater present in the rain barrel. So in this video, we will be taking a look at my process for adding a float switch to my rain barrel system as well as some other options you may want to use for your own setup. The type of float switch I decided to go with was a float switch by Sump Alarm, which had decent reviews, was low cost, and included a five year warranty. If you listen closely, you can hear the mechanical component inside the float switch as I change the position of the switch. And depending on how you wire the float switch, you can either open or close the circuit when the float switch is in the upward position or down position. Since for my application I want to shut off the water pump if the rain barrel is empty, I will need to use the brown and black wires from the float switch. If you are using your float switch for a different application or using a different brand float switch altogether, refer to your user manual for the proper wiring connection. Next I went ahead and installed the cord grip and float switch counterweight in a temporary location onto the float switch cable. The cord grip is used to lock the counterweight into place, but I will be adjusting the cord grip location later. The counterweight is used to orient the float switch as the water level rises and falls and to help keep the float switch vertical when the water level is high, but it is not intended to submerge the float switch. Also, if you enjoy these videos or find them useful, please smash that like button to help encourage YouTube to share these videos with others who may find it helpful and it also helps support this channel. Here's a quick demonstration for how the float switch should function with the counterweight attached. From this example, when the switch moves from the full position to roughly the seven o'clock position, the pump will be turned off. Next, I went ahead and pre-drilled a hole into my rain barrel for my float switch wire connection. I used a step drill bit to enlarge the hole after pre-drilling. I then inserted a cable gland into the hole to help secure the float switch cable and create a watertight seal. Next, I wanted a quick way to replace my float switch if it ever needed to be replaced without having to redo any wiring in my main enclosure tote. So I purchased a small junction box from my local home improvement store that I could customize to fit my needs and it was weatherproof. So I started out by making some rough estimates for where I wanted my incoming and outgoing connections to be placed on the junction box. Afterwards, I installed a cable gland for my incoming float switch cable. Next, I installed a 90 degree liquid tight connector since I'm going to use flexible non-metallic conduit to run my float switch connection back to my main enclosure tote. Once all my connectors were installed in the junction box, I went ahead and mounted the junction box to my wooden fence. Since the day was coming to a close and it would be too dark to film, I went ahead and reattached the junction box lid. The next day, I started by drilling a new hole in my enclosure tote for the incoming conduit connection. I decided to use another 90 degree connector since it was easier to connect my flexible conduit. Note, they do sell liquid tight straight connectors if you find those to be better for your project. Once the connector was installed, I could finally work on connecting the flexible conduit to my junction box and my enclosure tote. Hey. 
Once I figured out a general layout for my flexible conduit, I took a rough estimate for where I needed to cut the conduit. To cut the flexible conduit, I used my PVC cutters which created a nice clean cut. Once the conduit was cut to length, I could finally connect it to the 90 degree elbow connected to my enclosure tote. Next, I used some PVC conduit clamps to secure my flexible conduit to the wooden fence. Next, I needed to determine how much of the float switch wire needed to stay in the rain barrel and how much was needed to enter the junction box. I went ahead and made an estimated cut to reduce the amount of cable I would have to feed through the cable glands. Then, I went ahead and routed the float switch cable through the cable gland in the rain barrel. Since the location of my spigot prevents me from fully draining the rain barrel, I simply pulled the float switch cable until the float switch was about an inch from the spigot at the bottom of the rain barrel. Once I had the float switch positioned roughly where I wanted it, I went ahead and tightened the cable gland to keep the float switch in place. Next, I needed to route the float switch cable into the junction box. After the cable was routed through the cable gland, I used the leftover cable to route through the flexible conduit. Note, since I was not routing the cable a long distance, I did not need to use a fish tape but feel free to do so if you're using a similar application and it makes your process easier. Next, I worked on the wire connections in the junction box. Again, I set up my application this way so that if my float switch ever needed to be replaced, I would only have to disconnect this portion of the electrical circuit. To bridge the two sets of wires together, I used a barrier strip that I cut down to size using my bandsaw. After my wire connections were screwed down, I was finally done with the junction box part and could reattach the lid. Since the rest of my electrical components in my tote have disconnect terminals, I decided to install some male and female disconnect terminals onto my float switch cable, which allowed me to quickly connect the float switch in series with the rest of my electrical hardware and water transfer pump. Here's a quick diagram of my current electrical connections. Feel free to pause the video if you need more time to review. Since I did not have any electrical tape on hand, I used some heat shrink tubing to cover the blue electrical wire that was not needed for my application. Also, I plan to reroute my solar panel connection through the liquid tight conduit at some point in the future, but be sure to check your local code regarding any outdoor electrical work. Next, I wanted to take a little time to work on the landscape around the rain barrel since weeds were starting to grow and the task had been on my to-do list for a while. I do plan at some point adding an additional rain barrel, so I wanted to also leave enough room in the flower bed for the future add-on. After I used the pickaxe to create a border for my edging, I had a last minute idea to just use the no dig edging, which I do not have a video footage for, but basically all this digging was for nothing, but I guess it was good exercise. I'll leave a link in the description if you are interested in using a no dig edging, which I highly recommend. Here's the final result, which is nothing fancy right now, but I will be adding some flowers or some vegetable herbs later on. Next, I refilled my rain barrel to test the float switch functionality. If you pay attention to the counterweight and float switch, you will notice as the water fills, the float switch starts to pivot around the counterweight and then eventually floats vertically. Once the rain barrel was full, I turned on the water transfer pump to begin the test. 
The first test I wanted to perform was just a simple on off test by forcing the float switch to open the circuit if I flip the float switch upside down, which should then turn off the pump. The next test I wanted to perform was to see if the pump would automatically be turned off once the water level in the rain barrel reached the low point I defined, which was about an inch above my rain barrel spigot. So it's great to see that both tests pass for my application. Another device that I was considering implementing if I had more time is using a side mount liquid level switch which would allow you to define your low point much easier and allow you to immediately use your pump again after the water level rises above the low point unlike the float switch which you may have to wait until the rain barrel is refilled at least one half to three fourths of the way before the system thinks there is enough water in the rain barrel. For my application, these were not a large concern, but I just wanted to throw this option out there in case someone found it useful. Overall, I found this to be a fairly straightforward switch to add to my electrical system in Rain Barrel. If you have other methods you've seen used for this concept, feel free to share them in the comments below. Also, if you would like to see the previous videos for this Rain Barrel project, such as the installation of the pump, the solar system, or how I can remotely control the system, I will leave the video links in the description. Lastly, if you enjoy these videos, be sure to smash that like button and so that you don't miss out on future videos, be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.